Right, we're back to it after Easter. So let's um, try and get back into this. Right, so we're going to look at evolution today. And evolution is just a change over time. Okay, and I thought I'd just go through something that's changed over time, that's been, you know, big in my life. Um, and that's the um, games controller. Um, this is my first games controller. Okay, it's um, so we're, we're back in like the 1980s, early 1980s. And this just had, um, all you could do was just like twist it and you could move things up and down the side of the screen. So we played games like this called Pong, where um, each player's got a bat either side of the, the screen. So there's one here and one here. And you move up and down to push the, the ball back and forward over the net. Okay, I spent hours playing that with my, with my brother. Um, and then it evolved. Okay, so it changed. In the, the, the next games controller that came out was this one. That Again, all you could do was turn it round, up and down, but it had a button as well. So you could actually hold the ball in place and release it. So it had a, it had a fire capability. And they had other, other games as well. So it wasn't as if the previous controller changed itself. That was, you know, recycled, taken to the um, charity shop. This was the new one that that came out, and that's the one that we had, and we're very proud of it. Then another change occurred, okay, in that the joystick appeared. This could then mean you could go up, down, left, right, diagonally, um, and it opened up a whole new range of games where, where you could manoeuvre things around mazes, etc. Um, and then another one came out that had, a, that had two buttons. So instead of having one button there, and therefore if you were left-handed, you had to kind of like reach round. Now you had buttons that, again, they did the same thing, but a left-hander could use it more comfortably. Um, and then there was a big change. Then it changed into more like a game pad, which meant that you could, you know, with your thumb, manoeuvre up, down, left and right, and it had two buttons that did different things this time. You know, one might be accelerate and one might be brake on a driving game, etc. And then that changed again. Um um, you know, so there's now four buttons instead of two, um, and they had shoulder buttons as well. So you could do it again. It opens up a whole new um, branch of games that you could that, that you could play. Um, and then they brought in these analog sticks as well with more shoulder buttons. Again, um, yeah, so even more things that you you could do. Then there was other changes. So these are like gesture move controls that you, you probably know about this. This is the Wii that came out, um, and you know, and then, and then just showing one image, it, it, it went from these things that could just twist and turn and had a button to something that's like this. That's got a gesture controller here. It can, it's got direction, analog, digital, different buttons. So it's changed over time from something very simple to something that's very complicated, and that's very similar to how evolution works in that. Um, if something's successful, it's it's latched onto and then it's passed on and passed on and things tend to get more complicated and more complicated like humans have. You know, we had simple origins as well. Um, and, you know, where's it going now? Well, again, there's lot, lots of VR things happening now. And where will it lead us to? Maybe something like this. Who knows? With thousands of buttons. If you've ever seen the film, what's it called? I can't remember what the film's called. Or Ready Player One, you know, that's where it's all, you know, living in another world and things are moving that way now. This is the holodeck from Star Trek where you can be totally immersed in a, in a realistic world. Um, and maybe, you know, we're starting to experiment with just thought control, not having any controls whatsoever, just, just thinking left and the player will move left. So we're doing more and more of this now. Um, and then, you know, this is kind of what we're left with. We're left with, you know, there's people who still use joysticks, but, you know, they, they, they do flight simulations and they'll, and then therefore they have something that's very bespoke, very dedicated to that purpose. There's like general ones like this that are good for lots of, lots of kind of games. Um, and then there's also, yeah, the VR as well. So, yeah, you know, it's branched out now. We're talking like three different areas. And again, very much like happens in biology with living things. So before half term, um, sorry, Easter holidays, we looked at the mud skipper, and I've tried to draw out like nine mud skippers here. They all look very similar, but they all vary as well. 
just like we all vary. If we're in the classroom now, we all have, we all have different hair colour. You can look around, people have freckles, no freckles, people are taller, smaller, etc. Well, these are all my versions of mudskippers, and they all vary by their eye shape. Okay, um, Some are very similar. That one looks just like the one above. Yeah. Whereas these two here, that one and that one, look very different. That one's got its eyes pointing downwards. That one's got its eyes pointing upwards. This is just showing that in a population, you can get variation in our characteristics. And just like we see all around us. So there's variation in populations. And that's due to our genes that we've, in our chromosomes, that are lengths of DNA, we have little segments called genes that are the instructions for our characteristics. And we have different versions of those genes. So all these fish have got an eye like position gene. But there's little variations of those genes called alleles that mean that some people have got, or some people, some mudskippers have got higher eyes, some have got lower eyes. So if we imagine these are all living in the, the water, and it was hard to live in the, the water because there was lots of competition for food. Out in the, the mud, just close to them, was lots of food. However, when the ones with the eyes pointed down kind of crawled out onto the mud, they couldn't see the predators from above. And therefore, they were eaten. And therefore, these were the ones that were successful on land. And as you saw before Easter, you know, muskippers have got eyes now on the top of their heads. They all do because that's the successful version. If you look at the muskippers' close relatives, they've got eyes on the side of their heads because they still live in water. And it's better to have them at the side of the head in water because you can see more around you. You aren't missing out what's below. OK, so just, yeah, so that one, if we, if we put all these on land um, or in the, the mud, that one, 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 that one are all more likely to be eaten than this one. The one in the middle is more likely to survive. It's therefore more likely to breed and it's more likely to pass on its genes when, when it breeds. And therefore its offspring are more likely to have their eyes on the top of its head rather than at the side of its head. And therefore, over time, the population of the mudskippers have changed from eyes on the side to eyes on the top of their head. And just to kind of show that in a, in a, in a like a, just a blob kind of form, here's, here's a picture. So in this blue circle, imagine this is like a blue habitat, and these little ovals are organisms. And as you can see, I've got one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve visible organisms. Let me just come out of my PowerPoint um, and go to that slide. Where was it here? Oh, no, it's here. Uh, oops, that's it. Um, let me just zoom in slightly. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's not the case that there's just those number here. It's just that you can't see loads of them because if I, if I just um, Delete that and move this over here. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, the right one. Oh, rusty after half term. There you go. You can see that there's actually lots of organisms. It's a, it's a 10 by 10 grid. There's a hundred organisms there. But when I make the, the background the same colour as the majority of them, then you can't see the majority of them. They have really good camouflage. If I was a bird feeding from above, which are the easiest ones to see? All right, well, these dark ones here, I can see them easily. Those three I can see really easily. Oh, and I can see that light one really easily as well. That one's got, this one here's got really good camouflage. Those are all, well, those are, I can, again, I can, I can see them. Yeah, that one there, can't see it, and that one there. So if I was a hungry bird, and I'm going to, you know, I want to do things quickly, because then I can go, go back and feed my chicks, I'm going to feed on the ones that I can see. OK, if though the habitat was a different colour, maybe, you know, due to global warming, a desert spreads and things like that. So let's make it now um, a darker blue background. Right. Well, now you can see the ones that I could see before. I can no longer see. They're now perfectly camouflaged. So I was a hungry bird. I've got, there's loads of food I can see now, so I'm going to eat, 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 eat. The ones that I can't see, those that are there, there, and there, they're going to be the successful ones. And therefore, all the time, the population would change to a darker blue colour because that's the better version it is. What's misunderstood with evolution often is people think that, 
All right, this one here, let me just highlight it. That one there, it's got poor camouflage. It's really easily seen. And therefore, people think, oh, well, it, it can evolve to be darker. Well, it cannot evolve to be darker. This will live or die. And it, quite frankly, it's likely to die because it's got poor camouflage. OK, so this one will just be removed from the population. This one here that's got really good camouflage is more likely to survive, more likely to breed, more likely to pass on its genes for being this darker blue colour. And therefore, its offspring and more also more likely to be darker blue and therefore the population over time will more likely be be blue okay and it's just chance because if this background wasn't dark blue maybe it was light blue instead <coughs> well then again being dark blue is the worst color to be okay and therefore they're going to be eaten more often and the lighter ones are going to be the ones that are su that are going to survive so th this is why organisms that breed sexually, where there's a female and a male, have an advantage. Because when they breed, the offspring show variation. If you've got brothers or sisters, they won't be the same as you. Even if you have, you know, even if you are, you know, you know the same age. So if you had a non-identical twin, you know, the word non-identical non means that yeah, the offspring from sexual reproduction show variation, unless you're an identical twin version. Okay. So yeah, just by look, it depends if you are well adapted or not well adapted to the environment. Again, and now the very light one that was there, that's got the best camouflage. It will survive. It will therefore breed and pass on its genes for being light. And therefore, over time, this population are going to be more and more become light. Um, some organisms try and get around this problem by being dark at certain times of the year and being light at certain times of the year as well. So these things like cold, um, snowshoe hares that, you know, they get a white coat for the winter and they have a like a brownie dappled coat for the summer. OK, um, other things can't change their coat colour and therefore yeah, they will hibernate um, during the snow time instead. OK, so that's just a quick overview of what evolution is. You know, it's a bit controversial is evolution. Some people don't believe in evolution, but the people who don't believe it are are thinking that me as an individual, I can change and I can't change. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I am genetically only me. I'll either be successful or not successful. OK, so, yeah, instead of talking about saying, you know, this variation um, in a population, they will say, um, you know, so evolution says that um, organisms change to suit their um, their environment and that's not the case you know populations change over time but individuals either live or just die um so that's that's a bit of like a, a lecture of going through evolution you're just going to do a bit of reading now on the second task um where you're going to go to bite size and have a look through and do a couple of tasks for me so i hope you're well after it after the easter break and um i will speak to you again on thursday take care Nice to see you all, kind of.